Welcome to the Airlift Workshop, where you get expertise from the air suspension specialists, keeping you on the road and in top condition. Today, we're installing a Load Lifter 5000 Series Kit on a 2019 Chevy Silverado 1500. Installation will be nearly identical between the Load Lifter 5000, Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate, and Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Plus variations. Remember, this overview doesn't replace your installation guide. Grab yours out of the box and let's get started. We'll start by assembling the air springs. Place a carriage bolt through the innermost square hole on the rear side of each lower bracket. Install a lower bracket and roll plate on each air spring by inserting two flathead socket cap screws through the innermost mounting holes. Next, install the swivel air fittings to the top of each air spring. Tighten finger tight, plus one and a half turns. Attach the upper roll plates and upper brackets to the air springs using bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. Note that these brackets are not left or right hand specific. With the bracket installed, the swivel fitting needs to be less than 7 8 inch in height. If it is not, tighten the fitting until this height is achieved. Next, raise the truck and support the frame with safety stands. Drop the axle to make room for the air spring assemblies. For filming purposes, we're using a drive-on vehicle hoist. Remove the factory bolts that hold the upper brake line bracket in place. Reattach the bracket using two hex head cap screws, two flat washers, and two spacers. Locate, remove, and discard the jounce bumpers from both sides. Using a Torx bit, remove the two outermost Torx head screws on both wire harness guards located on the front side of the axle. Remove the brake line bracket located on the axle under the leaf springs on both sides of the vehicle. This bolt will be reinstalled later. Attach the brake line tab bracket using the previously removed factory hardware. Then attach the brake line bracket to the brake line tab bracket, tighten securely. Position the forward clamp bracket on the front side of the axle. Place the assemblies on the lower strike plate with the fitting side of the assembly facing outward. Align the tab on the forward clamp bracket with the hole on the front of the lower bracket. Insert two carriage bolts into the front and rear square holes of the lower brackets. Align the front and rear clamps correctly under the jounce bumper strike plate. Thread flange nuts onto the carriage bolts. For trucks that do not have a fifth wheel hitch bracket along the frame, place U-bolts over the frame on both sides of the vehicle. Lower the vehicle or raise the axle while inserting the threaded portions of the U-bolts through the corresponding holes in the upper brackets. Install flange nuts finger tight. Then, adjust the upper brackets to vertically align the air springs with the frame. Torque all flange nuts. For trucks that have fifth wheel hitch brackets along the frame rail, locate the holes in the middle of the bracket behind the jounce bumper mounting cups on the upper bracket. Once the upper brackets are in position, drill two holes through the bottom of the frame using the holes in the bracket as a template. Attach the upper brackets using self-tapping screws. Reattach the wire harness guards on the front side of the axle and tighten securely. Before routing air lines to the air springs, note the available length and pick a convenient inflation valve drilling location. We'll use the license plate recess as our location. You could also use the wheel well flanges or under the gas cap access door. You may need to drill a hole. Now, route the longest airline path first. For nylon hose, it's recommended that the airline be routed along the top of the frame, forward of the axle, then down to the fitting. When cutting airlines, never cut from the side or with wire cutters. You'll leave a jagged edge and ruin the hose. Instead, use a sharp razor blade to get a square, clean cut. A hose cutter will also do the trick. If you're installing braided stainless steel airlines, tighten the airline hex nut finger tight. Then use two wrenches to turn one additional flat, or one-sixth of a turn. Do not over-tighten. Use zip ties to secure the airline along the chassis every six to eight inches. Leave some slack. Coil and secure any excess airline in an area where it will not be damaged. The braided stainless steel airline cannot be trimmed. Place a nut and star washer on the inflation valve and push it through the inflation valve hole. Use a rubber washer, flat washer, and nut to secure it in place. Then twist on the valve cap. Before getting on the road, inflate the springs to 50 PSI and spray all airline connections with a soapy solution to check for leaks. That does it. 
Remember, you can find more information about all of our products at airliftcompany.com. And our knowledgeable customer service team is always just a phone call away. Thanks for joining us in the Airlift Workshop.